Hey, I'm Dustin. And I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast, the finest phototainment in the world. We are an irreverent look at photography. This podcast, like aspirin, will help you recover from your wedding hangover. Dustin, Steven. my man, how you doing? I'm well. I'm well. All things can, you know, considering uh, the current state of things. I, I don't understand what you're meaning. Um, current state of things is super happy. Everybody's hopeful and joyful, right? Hopeful, joyful. It's like Christmas out there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's been a it's been a real weird few weeks, few days in the actuality. Um, uh, you know, I would say I would say every hour. Every hour now feels like a, a day, a week, a month, a year. Um, I have aged so much in the past two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. And look, look, I actually have like real facial hair now. There's like a what James Kelly called a porn star mustache when I was recording with him for Photographer's Crack the other is that, day. Is that how you're getting through this epidemic is you're auditioning for roles? I mean, you know, if somebody wants to hire me. <laughs> No one does. No, no one does. No one does. Sorry, Stephen. Could be like that uh, camera operator for a porn star movie. <laughs> Creepy camera like, operator? Is like that a, a thing? Uh, like a porn star stunt double? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that'd be great. I, you know, I could do uh, what they do in uh, Love Actually, Martin Freeman's character. You know, the guy who kind of stands there so they can get the light right, and yeah. then they bring in the real actors. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they bring in the real actors and they're like, all right, well, you can get out of here now. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no, it's great. I was just having the most awkward time possible uh, covering my nipples and talking to somebody I barely know. Hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Can I just say, uh, Love Actually is like one of Jen's like favorite Christmas movies. Like if we, we watch it every year. It's become one of mine. I hated it when she first, uh, when her and I first met and like, it's, it's really grown on me. But, uh, I think Martin Freeman's character and, uh, oh, I can't remember the actress who he's paired up with, but their, their like story is probably my favorite story in that whole thing. Cause it's just so awkward and delightful the entire time. Yeah, it's a typical Hallmark Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah. Usually in typical Hallmark Christmas movies, I think about how I'm going to get to see Martin Freeman's nipples. <laughs> oh, it's a Watson's nipples from Sherlock. <laughs> is that is that what you think about, Stephen? <laughs> yes, all the time. Uh, he's, he's a tremendous actor, very funny guy. You know, he was uh, Tim in the original office. I did yeah, now that now that I think about it, you're right. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, you gotta get down on that original office with the with the Ricky Gervais. Uh, it's not as heartwarming as the office we had here in the U.S. It's more super super awkward. Makes your face turn red and makes you sweat the entire time you're watching it. But it's still very good. I never watched the U.S. version of the office, so I. Uh know nothing about the office who are you someone who's never worked in an office so i didn't think uh, i would find it funny no no you don't get to play this game that's like saying i didn't watch friends or i didn't watch seinfeld i didn't watch friends oh, God. the office was like the last show that was like that where it's just like everyone watched it and everyone laughed dustin I know. everyone laughed i own the office the dvd box set and i've never watched it Oh, that's so Dustin. That is so I mean, I freaking didn't buy Dustin. It for me, somebody gave it to me as a gift because they got tired of me always saying, I ah, don't watch The Office. <laughs> I'm glad there's other people in your life who are like, I'm sick of Dustin saying this bullshit. I'm going to shut him up real fast. <laughs> they were like, You have no excuse now. You own every season on DVD. Like, you have every episode in your house. I'm like, But I don't have a DVD player. Well, now you got the time to watch it, buddy. Oh, it's truth, truth. This is true. Instead, I'm it's not like you can go outside the house anyway. So, unlike most of you photographers out there, I am still working all day, every day. Oh, brag! I know. 
was like just a week ago, I was trying to decide what area of my business I really wanted to push into this year. And uh, Mother Nature decided that for me. Actually, did you hear, Stephen? Uh, they found patient zero in China. Really? Yeah, his name was Achu. I hate you. I hate you so much. That is that is the antithesis of, of comedy. That's the antithesis of fun. It was spelled uh, A-U space C-H-U. Well, that was a great dad joke. Um, Dustin, uh, what are you drinking tonight? We're going to shut that down. We're shutting that down real fast. I am drinking. I don't know if you would recognize this beer, Stephen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I bought this beer for you. Uh, Blackberry Farms Brewery bought this when we were at Imaging USA, just so I could uh, relive our kin kin kinward spirits. Is that a word? Uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> our no. time together. Our time together, Stephen. While we yeah. were at, uh, Imaging. Just wanted to mm-hmm. relive those moments, those tender moments of not being able to breathe and um, feeling <laughs> like we were going to die the next day. Yeah, no, that was a, that was fantastic. I love that as well. Um, I mean, not to be too crass, but we're kind of getting close to that point where we might feel like we can't breathe and we're going to die. Wow. That, I'm going to have to cut that one out of the episode. That was too dark. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! News. Freaking myself out. I saw a uh, news reporter. Um, this clip's been going viral on Facebook today. Uh, he was interviewing people because Pennsylvania is apparently shutting down like all non-essential um, stores and such. Mm-hmm. And so he was interviewing people outside a liquor store, and like they were getting so angry when he was telling them like they had no no idea that they were going to be closing things. And uh, she's like, turns around and like walks back inside to buy more vodka. Cause she's like, well, if the world's ending, I don't want to do it sober. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's just some truth to that. Some truth to that. <laughs> I was like, maybe I need to go to the liquor store tomorrow. Yeah, maybe. It's Indiana enact something like this. I did go to the liquor store the other day. It was uh, the only trip I've taken outside since self-isolation so that I could buy this Glutenberg stout. Uh, Jen and I have like a tradition every single year, St. Patrick's Day, we drink green beer um, because green beer is cool no matter what the uh, listeners of our podcast might send to me in DMs that is hateful. Um <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the hateful messages and they're delightful. I actually really love them. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so so I bought this and because Jen likes stouts, I like stouts, you know, completely not thinking about it. And then I got home and I was like, it's a stout. It's a dark beer. <laughs> how, how am I going to put food coloring in this and turn it into a green beer? It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, Yeah. Yeah, just drank a, a very, very nice uh, stout with some foamy head that was green. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody really wants in a beer is a nice foamy head oh, that's 100%. green. percent A green foam head. Yeah. Mm. You, know, you know how much time you have to spend like trying to stir around the food coloring to get the foam head of the beer to turn green? I don't, Steve. Why don't you uh, show It takes us. a lot longer than getting the actual liquid beer to turn green. <laughs> Yeah, I've never had green beer, so... Uh, what? I know. Steve. What? You Steve. live in America, where St. Patrick's Day is celebrated. Steve, the home of St. Patrick's me? Day. I am Irish. My blood is... Oh, green. oh so you can't celebrate it by law. Got it. It would be um, unethical. Your people don't celebrate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> we eat potatoes instead. Oh, Dustin, Dustin, Dustin. So, uh... What's going on for you? Um, you know, try to say this. We're we're gonna try to work this back into the conversation without sounding as douchey as you did last time. Okay. So, you have said you're getting a lot more requests for a certain type of your photography. Yes, nude shots of myself um, tend the uptick in popularity for those has gone up. Um, I've been getting a lot of demands that I stop doing that from people. Hmm. It's interesting. Do I need to start working out? No, I would work. I would work less. Mm, um, okay, okay, okay. Up, you know, really get the body into a different niche. Um, sort of like a dad bod plus category. 
Dad Bod Plus. I like that. That sounds good. Yeah, it's like the Dad Bod Silver Edition. <laughs> oh, we're getting we're getting audio critiques here. Yeah, yeah. Your your voice sounds lower than mine today, so interesting. Well, same old <laughs> same old audio. Same audio. Just That's how we always record it. Worse um, internet connection. Yeah. Um, I wonder if it's like lower, but just. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna set some ground rules since we are doing like a Facebook Live while we're we're recording. Um, we can't comment too much on what people are commenting because people listening to the podcast will just get really frustrated by that. So that's like our number one ground rule here. Unless like we specifically ask people questions and then they send us questions, we're not going to comment on anything that comes in. Cool. Cool. So so minimize the uh, the chat or whatever it is, and I just need your eyes on me, baby. Okay, baby, my eyes are yeah. only ever on you, Stephen. Yeah, I need to see the, the, I need to see the sexiness. Bring it, Dustin. Mm, I'm bringing it. Um, so what were we saying? How are things going with me post-apocalyptic uh, coronavirus? Are we calling it apocalyptic now? Are we calling it apocalyptic? Are you leaving your house? Are you leaving your house? That, apocalypse is like the end of the air? world. This is like you don't get to go outside for eight weeks minimum. That's not the end of the world. That's just uh, so a pause leave on your the world. house in eight weeks and there's nothing out there. And they're like, surprise, we were actually at war this whole time. Grocery stores are staying open. Are they? Other essential places are staying open. They are. We have our groceries delivered. I wouldn't know. So uh, when we first started this out, uh, Benjamin Trinitsky, the uh, CEO of Jiffy, mm -hmm. Giffy, why can't I think of that? It's Giffy, right? Giffy. Um, yeah, he commented and he said that he was really hoping that... Um, we didn't just do another one of those live things where we say, okay, let's sell albums at a discounted rate to survive. No, and so because we're sell photo booths at a discounted rate to survive. Mm -hmm. uh... Yeah, we're going to help out Ben. <laughs> so, But he said that uh, – so I just wanted to bring this up. He said that um, we got to look at buyer's behavior because nobody is in the mood to buy right now, which I feel is very true. Um, I'm not in the mood to buy anything right now except for alcohol. Hey. Um, and that's just the reality. He says, we are all acting like photographs are valuable and we're going to change people's lives through our, with our photos still, even at this time. And he's sorry, but he doesn't feel like that's totally true. And the only people who might feel like it's still true are, you know, people speaking from a point of view of privilege. And I just want to say, like, I... 100% agree with Ben on this. Um, the day that we found out that uh, everything was kind of going pear shaped and hey, we, we got to start locking stuff down. The virus is like not just here, it's here in much stronger force than we thought because of the whole thing where somebody in the government wasn't allowing like tests to go through or whatever. Um, you know, we're not going to get too political about this, but there's some weird stuff there. Um, and so, like, Ever, ever since that happened, like that day, Jen and I had postponements, we had cancellations, we, we lost a lot of income, and I jumped on Uber and applied to deliver for Uber Eats, because really? I was like, what is still going to be available for us to make money? Because we just lost a ton of money, and I was like, how can we stay alive? Because in my mind, I was like, we could try to sell albums, we could try to sell canvases, we could try to sell other things, but a lot of our clients are small business owners, a lot of our clients are possibly, you know, working at a place that isn't going to pay them a salary during this time or working in a place where they were getting paid hourly and now they're just laid off for the next eight weeks. So most people aren't in a position to spend money right now, which is why uh, I feel like what Ben said is such an important thing to remember. Like we're, we're, we're not as a nation in a place where a ton of people are going to be running out to spend money on stuff. That's why in our government, they're talking about uh, passing like a, a UBI, like universal base income for um, the remainder of the period where the coronavirus is causing people to have to stay inside. And they're talking about um, doing stuff like that where we get to, you know, everybody gets, what is it, like a thousand... I hope so. He's a good guy. Uh, everybody gets $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month or $500 per kid per month, $1,000 per adult per month. So that's why these things are being considered because our 
our economy, our, our stock markets have all just crashed because they know everybody's out of work for the next eight weeks. So if we pretend like we can keep like doing business because like, like this, this idea of like, let's just sell albums because we're going to get through this. That's kind of coming from a point of view, not just a privilege, but it's like this, it, you're denying what's really going on with our country right now. We're looking at eight weeks minimum of a shutdown for our country, like as a whole. Um, that's going to be a very long amount of time where people aren't making money. And so like the reason why I immediately jumped on Uber and was like, can I get to deliver for Uber Eats, you know, was what's one thing that they're still allowing to happen. They're allowing delivery to happen. Uh, Jen actually, she applied to deliver with a uh, shipped the people who deliver, um, My groceries. groceries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because that's another thing that they're going to allow to keep happening. Um, and so why did we do this stuff? Because we don't know that any sort of universal base income is actually going to come. We, at this point in time, we don't actually know that. We can't depend on that. We can't depend on some sort of a uh, small business thing coming through where we can take out a loan to get us through this period of time because of our economic hardship. Um, that's being discussed. They're, they're talking about making that happen. Uh, I saw in Indiana, they're going to try to free up 50 million for loans to small businesses. And across the nation, I think it was something like, was it like $500 billion or something? I don't know. It was a tremendous amount on a national level yeah, compared to what in, states uh, are doing. Request, uh, simply for an easy billion. So yeah. See what, <laughs> see what they say to that. Got, got to get that in my pocket, baby. It's been so, a hard uh, couple of days. I really lost a lot of money. Um, just need a couple. Really? Of when you said that you've been like going bonkers crazy with your real estate photography, you feel like you're losing money now. Well, no, that, no, that's just what I put on my SBA application <laughs> for that, uh, easy billion. I make, I make ten thousand five hundred dollars every single day doing portraits they're all canceled for the next eight weeks so mm -hmm. what can you do for me government uh yeah but it's i don't want i i'm sick of seeing as ben was talking about people saying like we you just need to sell albums we need to sell canvases we need to sell prints we need to sell raw files do that if you can that's great if you can book sessions for the future for a few months from now but you have to look at this with the mindset that we could be in this for three, four, five months. I mean, when did this whole thing start in Wuhan? It was uh, it was back in November, right? December or November. Mm -hmm. And just today is the first day China reported that they didn't have any new cases of coronavirus today. Just this week was when Wuhan finally like started closing down their temporary hospitals that they constructed. So this is not something that is going to blow over in two weeks. It's not going to blow over in a month. It's not going to blow over in two months more than likely. It would be a miracle if eight weeks from now, like everybody's back to work and then, you know, proceeding with life as normal. So I think Ben's very much right here. And I think we all have to start thinking about what else can we do? What else are we skilled at and capable at? Things that we can do where we can work from home because we just we cannot wait for the government to act because if our government was fast acting, they would have shut down our borders two, three weeks ago, you know, before things got really bad. But so yeah, that's my personal opinion. Steve's long winded response is just a way of saying that we're now starting a live streaming business um, <laughs> where we can help fellow entrepreneurs live stream because as you can see if you're it went in, so in well for us tonight we're experts we are professional live streamers um and for those of you listening to the podcast um which is how it should be um regurgitated into your system which is the complete wrong word um that's how it should be handled. No, I enjoy regurgitate. That's great. <laughs> Eat it, regurgitate it <laughs> yeah. to your friends. But um, so, yeah, as I was talking about earlier, um, surprisingly, the feds uh, cut interest rates on Sunday um, to an all time low, a recession level low for interest rates. So an already crazy housing market has gotten even crazier this week. Um, so you've got a lot of people that are wanting to sell and buy their house. So I've been shooting about five homes a day and my schedule is filling up for next week already. 
So I'm hoping that this momentum keeps up because it's kind of the perfect job for me in a quarantined environment because the home Dustin, is, home is Dustin, empty. Dustin, how do you think that's going to keep up? How do you think that's going to keep up? We are going into a self-isolation quarantine. Mm -hmm. How do you think you're going to keep getting more real estate jobs? I don't, I don't follow. Walk me through this. Okay. If people can't leave their houses, mm -hmm. are people going to be able to buy houses? Yep. We're going to do virtual buying. So I've been oh, working yeah. with realtors on how to do like virtual open houses, similar to like what we're doing right here with the Facebook Live. We're going to do something similar in the coming weeks if it does get to that place where it's, uh, it's really bad. But again, the market's so hot that these houses are selling in 24 hours. Mm -hmm. People trying to move away from places where there is coronavirus? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah, such as Fort Wayne. Um, but then it, that's also why the importance of good photography is I'm getting hired by people who weren't already doing good photography because now they want people to potentially make offers without seeing the house. So because... you think you think this market is going to stay afloat. Do you know what happened last time we had a recession here in the US? Uh, Back in 2008. Because the housing market completely bought, and totally bought, collapsed. House, that's what happened. Yeah, the housing market completely and totally collapsed. And you think that this time, when we are definitely heading into another recession because of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. you think the housing market is going to thrive? 100%. Guys, this is what I was talking about earlier, where people are living in denial and they don't <laughs> think at all about the future and what it's bringing. This is Dustin, a clear case of denial. Uh, I mean, an agent I worked with uh, yesterday, she sold three homes yesterday. That's great. So, I mean, yes, if it gets worse, obviously it'll get It's getting weird. worse, Dustin. It is getting worse. But like Steve said, I like to live in a state of denial that this is as bad as it will get. But I live somewhere a little bit more rural, um, not as crazy as where Steve lives. Um, oh, did I tell you? It's in Noblesville now. Mm. Yeah, it's in your house. It, wait, it is? It is? Yeah. I saw a fridge I... full of Corona. Oh, wow. wow. Jeez, this is what we're going to do. I thought you were going to try to open the, uh, you know, the episode with a bunch of, like, toilet paper jokes. And I was I was preparing myself mentally for, like, what I could do to do steer the podcast away from that. But here you are making like Corona beer jokes, which is even like a lower rung than the toilet paper. What are some good toilet paper jokes? I, I still, I would love to, if any listeners out there are listening to this and they have any wisdom on why the hell people are stocking up on toilet paper of all things. I it's, it still bl blows my mind. I don't understand it. I don't, Get it. I saw somebody today in a Facebook group, a photography Facebook group, talking about their trial because in their house, they only had seven rolls of toilet paper left. So they called every single store near them today to see if they had toilet paper. They finally found a store with toilet paper. They went to the store. They grabbed two, four packs of toilet paper because they weren't certain when they would be able to buy toilet paper again. And all I can think is, you had seven rolls. Yeah, like How my... fast do you go through seven rolls in your house? Like, unless you have seven people in the house, like, that should last more than a few weeks. Yeah. This is not like a rush out to the store to buy toilet paper moment. And it was like, this person was complaining that other people was were hoarding toilet paper. And it's like, you, you are hoarding toilet paper right now See, when we, you talk about going to the store when you have seven rolls. We rushed out to the store to buy meat and eggs and produce. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all gone, wasn't it? Because it was uh, all gone at my store. Well, we went to uh, like a deli to buy meat because, of course, people had me all paranoid because they're like, you know, some of the bigger grocery stores actually get their meat from China. So, oh my gosh. So what you're telling me is Fort Wayne's still super racist. Got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We might go back to the store again because some, uh, unknown sources were telling my wife today at the hospital that there is word that they are going to go to a stricter quarantine type thing. Yes. As soon as the, I guess, national guard gets positioned, whatever, that means 
But so, Stephen, you talked earlier about how this is affecting you. Um, I know you and Jen did a little coronavirus episode, but um, what's what is this doing like directly affecting you? Like you've had weddings cancel. I yes. Assume? Weddings cancel, events cancel, uh, video projects put on hold indefinitely. Um, yeah. So it's video all video projects all. put on hold oh. indefinitely. What does that mean? Like they're just uh, cause we had to, we had to do interviews with people for the video project and their companies are saying to them, you're not allowed to have contact with other people. You're not allowed to go to like in-person meetings mm -hmm. for the foreseeable future. So it's indefinitely because, uh, the company said for the next, um, 14 days they weren't allowed to but that's going to be lengthened because the virus is spreading and getting worse right now uh, i don't know if you saw this but here in indiana they still had like saint patrick's day parties over the weekend uh like you know when they do all the bar crawls and stuff like that on like friday saturday night um and they still had a ton of people at them like people showed up because coronavirus is not a big deal and we're going to go out drinking and i you know what i like to call those people the infected see what's funny is here in fort wayne so the mayor of fort wayne his brother owns the biggest uh bar that has like the biggest saint patrick's day party in fort wayne and so the mayor called to cancel the like saint patrick's day parade thing that we have mm -hmm. where they like turn the river green and it's like a whole thing he like put in the word to cancel that and I guess the guy who runs that said, I'm not canceling that until your brother cancels his St. Patrick's Day party. Nice. His bar. And needless to say, that party got canceled. <laughs> that was a good move on that person's part. I'm, you know, they should be super proud of themselves. Because I assume that was a ton of revenue that everybody lost that day. <laughs> it's going to be that way for the next, you know, five weeks or so. Just constant stream of revenue loss um we just got the word today that our wedding in mexico for april just finally pulled the plug um so i'm in the process of getting you know refunds and uh canceling things so it was funny because the bride was like oh and don't forget to cancel your um your trolley or your uh, shuttle your shuttle from the hotel to the airport and back and I'm like, oh, shit, I never booked that. <laughs> so maybe it's a good thing that uh, this didn't happen. Yeah, because I'm sure you you kind of scheduled a trolley this week yeah, some, some point in time. But it was just I'm sure you could have found a taxi cab to just take you to the hotel. I mean, you would have been so in such been, trouble. I would have been stuck. I would have been stranded. <sighs> but it was just it just was funny. So I still hey, have to uh, I do want to bring this up aldrich mints in the comments just said uh go puff delivery which incidentally he just started working for them since all of his gigs for the next two months have been postponed has toilet paper and lots of essentials and they deliver them to your door what did we say about comments steve i said you couldn't get into oh. them because you were derailing the podcast mm. to just talk about random comments this is this is stuff that actually like has a bearing to like what we're saying now. Oh, so okay, all right, yeah, yeah. You got to learn how to do this. You know, uh -huh. you got to be a multitasker. I'm here multitasking. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at the comments. I'm talking to you. I'm paying attention to you. You're yeah, <laughs> editing. Well, um, but yeah, finished so Game of Thrones. As of so, now, you know. real estate photography seems to be um virus proof but we'll see if that keeps up um we are already getting emails from june brides um <laughs> that uh asking like what we're gonna do in the event that like their wedding gets canceled or you know postponed so i'm still trying to figure out how to reply to those those couples mm -hmm. uh, my my may weddings have both told me that um, they're moving forward, rain or shine. So, wow, wow. Um, I just booked a June wedding, end of June. Um, and I put like a, I still, I'm still writing full. the, I need mean, paid in full. <laughs> I'm still, still working on the contract. I did say they have to pay in full, uh, or I, I gave them a discount if they pay in full now. Um, but I said, if they need to postpone the wedding or move it to a different date, 
I would, you know, shoot it, no extra charge. Absolutely not do it. That's what you was. No. Wow, no. So how are you handling postponements when you're you're not available? I haven't had one yet. The common question. I had a photographer call me this morning asking me what to do. They just had an April wedding postponed to September. Uh, for Saturday, they're already booked. And they mm-hmm. were asking for my advice on how to navigate that. So I'm I'm curious, what Stephen Van Elk, what's the great Indiana man, what you You know what, um, since you're already asking some questions, I'm just going to say this now so people who are watching live now, if you guys have any questions, feel free to post those in the comments. And when we get to Q&A, we'll prioritize your guys' questions over the ones that we have saved in our notes. Or we won't. Especially if they're related to coronavirus and stuff. Um, okay. So what am I, what, what are Jen and I doing if, if we had somebody postpone and they picked a date that we are unavailable? Mm-hmm. That's what you want to know. That's what I want to know. In that situation. Wow. I'm really cognizant. I just burped and like, we don't usually do like a live video while we're recording. Oh, see, this and is so like it's like, new usually volume. I just cut that out. I don't know if people oh, heard yeah, it. I this have to worry about oh. flubbing, but, uh. Here we are. Oh, it's all it's flubber up in here. You know what I'm talking about? Robin Williams, my man. That's right. Uh, so if if somebody rescheduled on a date where we weren't available, um, I think you have really kind of two options here. Option number one would be to try to work with other photographers in your area, see if any one of them would uh, a take the wedding on for you. Okay. And shoot it like an associate photographer where they shoot for you and then send you the files. Um, B, pass it off to somebody else. Uh, photographers in our area are um, saying things like they'll take on a, a bride and groom's wedding. Or she shouldn't have said that. They'll take on a couple's wedding um, and just use the deposit they paid to the other photographer towards this new wedding and not like charge them a deposit. So they'll just like, if the deposit they paid their other photographer was a thousand dollars, they just give them a thousand dollars off whatever their rates are. Um, so that it's not like the, the clients out. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, those are two options. Um, another option would be to develop sort of some sort of trade system. Like, there's going to be a lot of photographers working on reschedulings right now. Right. If you have somebody who shoots a similar style to you, and you know each one of you has a wedding you can't shoot, but you're both available for the other person's wedding, then you wouldn't necessarily need to trade money. You know, you could just do it. Um, I don't advise doing that because <laughs> if there's no money on the table, where's the incentive to do your best work, right? <laughs> but the incentive so, is there because you want to make the other photographer look good. I know. Here, but here's my million dollar idea, Steve. Yeah. We invent sort of like a picture like a Napster like platform, but for trading weddings. Kind of so, like a, like so, a digital <laughs> Pokemon card. Type system. No, no, no. You said Napster. So people are just going to upload weddings they have and other people are going to download them illegally. Correct. Correct. <laughs> that is that is what Napster was. So this is what you're proposing to the world is a illegal download situation. Yeah. Um, but picture like a, like it's like an online, almost like a draft, like a fantasy draft um, for players who you can't have. Um, so you're, you know, putting like, I've got Kathy who I can't shoot her wedding because she chose, you know, to rebook her date on a day I'm not available. And then you put it out into this, you know, system and it would pair you with another photographer that has another bride who, you know, you're available to do that wedding. So then it's like you're trading. It's like a trading platform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that? Boom. I don't like anything. Like, are you vetting these people in, in this no, situation? There's, there's no vetting. It's purely. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I know. I, I mean, I'm like not vetting them. That so you're vetting them all. all. You're vetting them all. Oh, gosh. So at the bottom of every, you know, welcome to weddingtrader.com. Um, are we, we, like, are we you, stuck you, on that name? Weddingtrader.com? Is that, is that what vetted, we're stuck you've on? You've been vetted by the great Indiana man, Stephen Van Elk. 
I'm liking this idea less and less the more you talk about it, but I've got to <laughs> got to be honest with you here. I think there's some real merit here. I mean, this is a global crisis. This is a, you know, a global solution. Um, yeah, no, we we can Ah, man, I it is a global crisis and we do need global solutions. This is not Wedding one of them. Trader. Wedding I mean, Ooh. it doesn't even have to be just for photography. It How are we DJs. spelling trader? How are we spelling trader? Is it T R A D E R yes. or is it T R A I T O R? That's a totally different website. Because I feel like it's the photos. second one. I feel like it's the second one where your friends are all stabbing you in the back and stealing your weddings. Because that's what I was pitched Napster. So <laughs> that's my secondary platform. But uh, this one is trading weddings. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Sounds a lot like like wedding trading swapping or something. Wedding no. swapping. <laughs> You're making me less and less comfortable with your idea. I didn't think it could get worse, but it's getting worse wedding, every second you talk about it. Wedding swinging? No. <laughs> no, that one really doesn't work. Um, no, no, no. I mean, yeah, let's just call it like wedding throuple or something. Like, where are we going with this? Wedding open relationship. (laughs) There you go. It's where you're open to a new photographer. eBay for weddings. Lowest bid on the date. I like it, Aldrich. Yeah, that that was Aldrich Mintz. And, uh, oh, eBay for weddings sounds absolutely terrible as well. Um, Just because lowest bid on the date, you know? Our industry is already crashing. Do, you want to, do we want to crash it even more, you know? Is that, is hey, that what we're doing here? time, Steve. You just said it's a recession. The economy's bottoming out. Why not take the wedding industry to a new low? <laughs> <laughs> Why not destroy the industry we have? It's a, <laughs> haven't we just, done enough to it already? Just picturing us in this post-apocalyptic world, we're wearing like... You know, potato sacks, we're dirty, we're on oh, our phones, man. and we're like, Can we just, just talk about just the fashion we're going to have? I just need a wedding. <laughs> I'll do it for toilet paper. I'll do it for toilet paper. <laughs> Maybe that's the currency of the future. Maybe there was like a prophecy that in the future we would buy things with toilet paper, and I didn't get the memo. Maybe. Maybe maybe that's the new wedding fashion going forward is we show up to shoot a wedding and we're just wrapped like mummies from here on out because uh, real clothes have stopped being made because the only thing we have anymore is toilet paper. And toilet paper rules us all. Yeah, I know. The thing I was reading was saying that mummies are the only ones immune to the coronavirus. And that might be the reason that... Um there's so much toilet paper being bought. You know, up until now, it was like this episode was going to be a time capsule for future generations where they would look at this episode and be like, this is a real moment in photographers' lives. This is what was really going on. These are the hardships they were facing. Mm -hmm. But now, after you just did that joke, they're going to be like, oh, this is when this podcast died. It was buried (laughs) for a reason. They went live and it all burned down. Dustin killed it. He murdered it right in front of Steve and in front of all the listeners, too. All, what, eight or ten of them who have been on? I just, I'm saying that, you know, if we're going to burn it down, we might as well go out in a big ball of flames. Big ball of glory? Flames? Are people buying gasoline with the toilet paper? Or what's just toilet paper. These other essential things that you think people would buy? Plenty of that. Yeah, gas is down to like a dollar eighty here. Know, it dropped like fantastic. over a dollar in price. It's fantastic for you who's still driving around to uh, do all those real estate houses. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting a yeah. hammer. Oh gosh, Ugh. just threw up a little bit. It's all. It's okay. Don't worry it's about just it. That green beer. Oh, Dustin, we've been talking for a while about all this, yeah, all this Corona y stuff. Mm-hmm. Let's let's have some fun. You want to do some Q and A with me, buddy? Stephen. There's nothing I would love to do more. All right, buddy. Let's do it. Um, Jackie Santana from our very own <gasps> Facebook group says, just just recently, could you possibly release more lives of your podcast? Now, Jackie, why would we do that? 
Well, I mean, the podcast has lived several lives, much like a cat. This podcast has multiple lives and it has died in many forms and come back again. I mean, we could go back in time and release some of those possibly or no, does that not work like that? Mm -hmm. How do we do this? So it's Dustin like and I are both time travelers and every time we die and the podcast dies, we regenerate much like the doctor in Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. Different than is the that, doctor how? I, I don't know how either one of us is different from the doctor. Technically, the doctor lives forever, has unlimited regens, we found out this year. Yeah. So technically, um, we could all be the doctor. Did you ever think about that, you know? Wow, that's some deep stuff, Steve. Uh, uh but we yeah, could Jackie, do more this, lives. This all started with me just asking Steve if we should do some lives since we have more time on our hands. And then this happened. <laughs> then Steve failed at it. And then Dustin made it work. Because <laughs> I've been working at it all day to do this for clients on my laptop, which is not what I podcast from. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. All right. That, that, so that was... Yeah, uh, let, let's do some other questions. Matt from a random Facebook group says, how do you guys film weddings without the camera stops recording every 30 minutes? Use a real camera, Matt. Next question. I'm sorry, what real camera do you use that doesn't stop every 30 minutes? I've seen your cameras. I've oh, used them. They I've stop every 30 minutes. Yes. They, they do. Yes, they do. Um, actually, the new, the new Panasonic stuff that doesn't stop at 30 minutes. Did you know that? It's nonstop. Nonstop. Why is it writing and writing all the time? It's just, uh, yeah. Why is it writing and writing like it's running out of time? Lumix is just breaking all the rules. Um, Matt, so filming weddings, 30 minutes. So here's the trick. You hit the start button and the stop button during the ceremony. Mind blown. You got that? You got that backwards. Got no, that backwards. No, I, I I like to start it because I normally forget to hit record. So I'm like midway through the ceremony, I'm like start it, stop it, and I end up getting no ceremony except for like a half a second. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I love that idea. I love I love the idea that Matt's like, I could hit stop and start. Mm -hmm. You know, 29 minutes he in could. or whatever but he could, but can he? But can he? <laughs> Uh, the questions like that just crack me up because it's like if you just stop to think about it for like two seconds, you figure that one out. Mm -hmm. But now if you were at a wedding where like you weren't allowed to move and you had like a bail shot in the back mm -hmm. and then like two people on either side, but nobody was manning the bail, the bail shot in the back, then it could become a problem. Mm -hmm. Or it couldn't be uh, yeah, because you just, just keep your shooting from sides, Matt. I only shoot ceremonies that are 29.9 .9 minutes long. Um, anything longer than that, I cannot be responsible for capturing. Good point. Good point. Uh, Dustin, I can only see like four comments. Uh, have we gotten any more questions? Uh, just people coming. Luke McBride chimed about. in to say, uh, just shoot on real cameras like Dustin said, like the black magic. Are you guys familiar with black magic? Did, are, have you ever used a black magic? So those are cameras that are created by witches or Wiccans, depending on what side of the country you live on. Um, and we don't condone them in Indiana, but S Stephen, for some reason, Luke uh, still still uses them. Um, it's a very dangerous, slippery slope into witchcraft. Uh, Ulysses del Toro asks, why aren't you guys wearing your new Sony pony shirts? Uh, that would be because mine that I ordered hasn't come yet. Pretty simple. Hey, you know, I got a better question. Ulysses, why aren't you wearing your Sony pony shirt? Yeah. 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 You're listening live right now. We know you're there. Where, where's, where's a screenshot of you with that Sony pony shirt? Huh? Huh? You're going to come hard at us like that on our podcast? <laughs> Is this how you want to play this game, Ulysses? Actually, uh, I would love any of the listeners who purchased one of those shirts. We had hundreds. I would love to see any of you guys wearing that shirt. Uh, I'll drop a link uh, in this feed uh, for anybody who wants to buy one still before we uh, take them down because of the lawsuit Sony has against us for using their name on a T-shirt. 
check your yeah. text messages? Mm, that's probably uh, not did, I didn't get anything, Ulysses. Um, nothing on my phone. Just uh, putting that one out there. <clears throat> Ulysses texted me a photo of him wearing the Sony Pony shirt, and that'll be the episode art for this. <laughs> oh, um, let's see. What else we got here? Uh, Garing Bat says, do you think the price for the R5 is really going to be at the thirty four ninety nine range? Uh, uh, yes. Why do you think that? Because everybody wants it and they want some money. Yeah. So the thing I'm seeing, though, is the mirrorless cameras are coming in cheaper than what the DSLR cameras they're replacing are. Mm-hmm. And like $34.99 would have been like 5D Mark IV when it first came out. Now it's being sold at $24.99. I could see it being more expensive than $24.99. I don't know that it's going to be $34.99, though. I feel like... I feel like it's got to be cheaper. I mean, it seems to be the trend, but I, I don't know. I'm yeah. no pricing expert when it comes to Canon. It'll be at least thirty five hundred bucks plus tax and shipping. plus tax. Oof. Uh, it, are you maybe thinking pounds, and then in the U.S. it'd be less money? I was thinking ounces. Personally. Oh wait, that's but, um, that that's messed up, right? It's <laughs> it's thirty five hundred pounds. That'd be more money in the U.S. Damn it. Um, Random Facebook question. Uh, if you could morph into any animal, uh, what animal would you morph into? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? That's not in our show notes, and that is not in what people have been posting here. It's, it's right there, Steve. What's if your I could morph into any animal, what would I morph into? Would, would, That's what would you want to know. Cat? Steve, would it be a cat? No. Why would it ever be a cat? Yeah, you kind of look like a, a cat kind of guy. If I was going to morph into any animal, I'd be a dog. I'm a very good boy. I'm a very good boy, Dustin. What would you morph into? A uh, friend of the show, Devin Roland, uh, got into a conversation last night with me about the famous series Animorphs and uh, was kind enough to mock up a few... Uh, <laughs> book cover images and uh i'm going to uh share those with you guys uh in the show notes but uh it is steven <laughs> morphing into a beautiful kitten a beautiful beautiful kitten yeah i'm a kitty kid the cat hair, the hair too in that image is uh something worth framing let's just say that something worth framing mm-hmm. mm. that's what i like to hear yeah. But uh wow. Devin, I'm a huge, huge fan, closet fan of Animorphs. Read them all, still have them all on my shelf. Um but yeah. I'm so grateful that you made these uh these books book covers for us. Steven not so much, because Steven doesn't read. Well, you know, I guess if I could change my answer, then I guess a cat, because Devin already made the art for that. Mm-hmm. But like my real answer, my real answer, favorite animal ever since I was a kid was always a cheetah because it's so fast. I, I want to be fast, too. Mm, you know, cheetah. I, I want to be a very fast guy. Interesting. Interesting answer. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite animal growing Wouldn't up? Wouldn't be but? a snake. Wouldn't be a snake, Devin. Just throwing that out there. No, I, I see think, you as a snake. I, I commonly refer to you book. as a snake when other people ask me about you. I'm like, that snake? That snake? Because you're afraid I'm going to choke you? Is that is that why? Or because I'm going <laughs> to bite you? Um, but, no, I think she picked that cover image because she thought I looked damn good in a turtleneck. And um, yeah. Not wrong. Not wrong at all. Not wrong. I think i got to bring that back like Steve Jobs. Um. Tanner Kupari from our very own Facebook group asks, so my partner and I have a more light and airy style. One of our potential brides, who we already cut a substantial deal for, just sent us this. What would you do? And here's the message from the client. I hope this isn't a rude question, but when do the editing of photos, do you ever do a darker, moody vibe? Like, (laughs) more rustic. And that is good to know. Could we possibly sit down together before then? Yes. 
No, you do do. Mm-hmm. Tell me what you do do. Uh, requires toilet paper. Mm-hmm. 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 Requires toilet paper. That's that was. That was where you're going to stop with that. That was just a toilet paper joke. It was another. You're just killing the podcast again. <laughs> you could hear the silence. I'm going to leave the silence in when I edit this. Usually I edit silent pauses like that out, but I'm going to leave that in so everybody knows how terrible I so felt when you said when that. When we sit down with the bride and groom, we sit, We have a little iPad. We slide it across, and we let them pick the editing style that they want, um, <laughs> and that's how we edit. Yeah. I mean, why would you want to have control over that kind of stuff in like your... uh, Yeah, we say, you know, this is what we call the non-edit look. This comes with your package. And then this is the light and airy and this is the dark and moody look. This is an extra two grand for... This is what we call the non-edit look. It's what comes with your package. Go ahead and try to open one of those files on your computer. You can't. They're raw files. There's a reason it's called a raw file because it'll have you going raw... Just like that. Just like that. Wow. Just, you know, it's great that we have other people here to like watch this for our, the first time ever as we go live because they could really see me dying when you say these things. Oh, uh, we already knew you were pretty dead, Steve. <laughs> I'm dead inside. This podcast is simply so people can remember you in the yeah. afterlife. <laughs> uh, Tanner, you know. Never, never give in to the client. The client is your enemy and you are fighting them every step of the way, especially now, (laughs) especially in these times, in these times, you really have to decide if this is a battle you want to fight. If you know, you got to pick your battles and what better time to decide you're going to pick to fight every single battle than right now when times are tough. Mm -hmm. Times. It's how you can stick out. People will know you as the person who fights with them. Yeah. It's all about that reputation. Yeah. I would just, I mean, I wouldn't fight it. I would just say dark, dark and booty is what you're after. I think. Uh, don't <laughs> Did worry. you say dark booty is what you're after? <laughs> dark and moody is what you're after, but not to worry. We're a light and airy photographer. Uh, we can, we can fix that. Girl, um, I just want to know if you've been tanning that so, booty. See, see your phone right there? See your phone right there? All right. Let's take that brightness down about 50, eh, about 60%. Boom. Look how dark that is. <laughs> Do you want to teach clients that they can edit their own photos now? Look how moody that is. Here, here's this Instagram filter. It's called oh, Lomo. No, this is, we're just turning this the brightness down on their phone. XLC2. <laughs> These are the dark ones. This one's called Sepia. <laughs> Have you guys heard of Visco for your iPhone? No. Nah, Go crazy. Yeah. Get on that Go visual crazy. supply company life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kenzie Ray McMullen just asked, what do you guys think about all these photographers selling fake watercolor images She's everywhere? referring to us, Stephen. Uh, I believe I just saw you guys post like us about how we're now offering uh, watercolored pictures of our bodies. Um, I'm saying, yeah. you know, what up, Kenzie? This is what we got to do to make money in these hard yeah. times. I set up the camera, I put it on a timer, I strip completely naked, I get in front of it, I take the photo, and then I print the photo and run it under the water in my sink? Is that how you do this? Where's the color aspect? (laughs) I I throw some food color into the water. There there it is. There There we go. (laughs) Because otherwise it's just a wet photo of you. It's not the only thing that's going to be wet when they see that photo. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, oh I know. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, God, I set him up for that one. Set him up for that one. I like to make sure I get those photos out to him real fast so the photo is still moist when it arrives. How many people just quit the podcast forever? I did. They're like, oh. I've been waiting for the day when Steve would save moist so I could finally just throw my phone to the ground and break it. Oh, I've been subscribing to the Patreon level where they send me send me these damn cassette tapes. Now I've just got got to quit my subscription. <laughs> oh, doesn't um what are fake watercolor images? What is that for real? <laughs> if we could be real for a second. 
if you're watching live, you can chime in. Just let us know. Uh, Kinsey says she feels like these are going to be the future selective color trend that we all look back on and cringe. Mm -hmm. I think I don't really know what this is. I think photographers are trying to. So a lot of the labs are offering this as a service, like um, the big print labs. And you've got photographers who are trying to sell this as sort of an heirloom feature because perhaps your client's too cheap to hire someone to paint them. And um, this is the next best thing. Like I used to make fun of my dad growing up because my dad had a painting commissioned of our house. And I always thought I could take the photo of the house and th run it through one of those Photoshop filters um, and make it look like it was a painting. Oh, God, guys, he just opened a glass bottle. Glass bottle is going into the beer. And it's cough syrup. It's cough syrup, ladies and gentlemen. Dustin, I don't know what you're talking about. Can you please just keep doing the show like normal? You're acting like people are watching what I'm doing. Jeez. Just me. Just me. So, Kenzie says people are editing their clients' photos to look like a digital watercolor piece. Correct. Um, yeah. And it's not my not my cup of tea. I don't like them. Um, when, we, when Stephen and I were at Imaging USA, uh, I saw several examples of this. I believe there was even a category around this in their um, print competition. And uh, it was right next to the selective color category in the print competition. Yeah, yeah. Not not my thing, Steve. Not my thing. Um, but Kenzie, you should give it a try. If it's uh, something your clients want. Why fight it? Yeah. Yeah, why fight it up? Um, I mean, back when Mance wanted dinosaurs in their photos, I'm like, sure. Anything. <laughs> Have you ever considered doing anything like this? So I know there's like a photographer near me who will um, – She'll take a photo that she does of the couple, and then she'll actually paint that photo and then send them the painting after the wedding. And then there's also like that thing where people will hire somebody to come and paint live at their wedding, which I actually think is kind of cool. I've seen it done at a few weddings that we've done so far. So, Yeah. Yeah. So, so like – like the watercolor thing, that's like somebody applying some sort of filter or something in Photoshop to make it look like a watercolor, right? Where they're like, right. these are the lines and I'm smudging the, the, the color out of the lines and yeah, stuff. And it like just looks kind of horrible. like liquefy on a greater scale mm -hmm. to give sort of a brush stroke movement type look. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Just just kind of had to like parse my way through this thing for me because yeah, I feel like that is going to be something that people are going to really regret having done at some point in time in the future. And then like some people will have done it and they'll have done it so well that people will look back and be like, "This was art. This was art, my man." Right. It yeah. is. It is art, technically. My man. But not. But not. Uh, yes, Devin, Devin Roland asks, yes. Steven, is your mic held together by yellow rubber bands? Devin, damn Just it. like his soul. I'm Just so... Like his soul. I'm so called out right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. She, she asked it a second time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm having a panic attack over Devin, here. This is what People a professional uses. And Steve's being held together by rubber bands and duct tape. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Do we have time for one more question, Steve? Being that, holy shit, it's twelve thirty. You want to? You want to go two mics? Is that, is that how we want to do this? I, I have a mic with like the the actual bands. This this mic was delivered and they forgot to include the bands with it, so I just put yellow rubber bands. Uh, little thing about suspension mics like this, um, it's just any sort of thing that's elastic that is relatively tight mm -hmm. that'll hold it in place. Like um, we'll do the trick as long as like you're not bumping it around a bunch. Um, but yeah, rubber bands aren't really going to do the trick if like I bump it like where these other um, bands that I have on like my other one would do the trick. But I like this mic and this boom arm better, so I use this with the rubber bands because mm -hmm. I'm cool like that. I guess. 
or I mean, <laughs> my whole entire company is held together by rubber bands and duct tape. There it's it not is. just the podcast. There so it is. My life is held together by rubber bands and duct tape. Roger from a random Facebook group asked the following. Many of my oh, you skipped over you skipped over a question in the show notes just to get to Roger. Roger. Roger reached out to me personally for this question for Roger. A Roger. Facebook group. This is a business question, Stephen. Maybe you can chime in because you're so business savvy. Many of my competitors do, use rubber bands. Roger. Do not even have websites. Use rubber bands. Is it a dick move to buy <laughs> duct tape and rubber bands? Roger. Duct tape and rubber bands. Is it a dick move? Did I get to it, Dustin? Buy... Was that the right answer? They're, okay, I'll let you do it. I'll do it. Do it, do it, do it. Do it. Take it from the top. So Go for it. Go for it. Listeners can see how hard this is for me. <laughs> Many of my competitors do not have websites. Is it a dick move to buy their would-be domains and direct it to my site? I feel like if they wanted them, they should have purchased them by now. <laughs> Steven, is your name Roger. Is this, is Many this of my competitors do not have websites. Is a dick move to buy their would be domains and direct it? So back in college, Roger, that's a dick move. <laughs> Roger, you're a dick. So back in college, Stephen, I have to share a little story. Back in college, did you ask if I was Roger? This is a Dustin move. If I've ever seen a Dustin move, back when you were in college, let me finish this story for you that you've told multiple times oh, on this, this before. Okay. You changed the metadata on cameras that you checked out from your school so that it would say Dustin McKibben dot com or whatever so then when those people uploaded their photos to the internet they wouldn't realize it but they're actually promoting your uh your company through their uh metadata that wasn't yeah no that wasn't the story that's not where you were so going room- what other dickish things have you done in your life <gasps> my roommate and i i mean smart business moves but dickish things let's be so honest steven and i you have to remember listeners are very old like ancient and um back when we were alive um it was kind of the dawn of websites for photographers. Like photographers didn't necessarily have websites back when we got into this business. And, um, my last year in college was sort of the first year that websites started really becoming a thing. And we had this idea, I think like GoDaddy had just started and like you could buy, GoDaddy. buy your domain. And so like I bought, my name, Dustin hey, com, and a few other yeah, domains Daddy. that I still own. Uh-huh. And so my Tell roommate and I were like, should we go ahead and just buy all of the senior classes names mm, and then Daddy. try to sell it back to them? Needless to say, we didn't. We were like, that. that's crossing probably too many lines. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel like... Yeah, that would have been crossing way too many lines. Sorry, I got really caught up with trying to say I, daddy as much as possible. I, know. I don't know if you heard that. I, um, I turned my I, headphones off for a second. I have a weakness for doing terrible stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. um, Dustin, that would have been a, a very, very business sa- savvy move. Um, it's like everyone those, would have hated you. You would have lost right now. all of your Selling friends. It. They're getting in trouble with the authorities, people who are selling things at like marked up prices. I was reading about that earlier today. I yeah. Know, I know Amazon banned a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's good. Um, I was watching a Gary Vee video the other day and he was talking about people who were doing who were hoarding supplies and then selling them. And he was like, you're basically just uh, you're 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 run- you've started a business based on fear and you're selling like based on fear. And he was like, that's just a, a really shitty, terrible thing to do. And f- you. And I was like, Gary, can I agree with you more, my man? <laughs> I love it. Um, but then he like kind of caged at the end and he was like. But like no judgment here or something. And I was like, you just spent like three minutes saying F you <laughs> to these people <laughs> all the, all throughout your video. And then at the end, you're like, no judgment here, though. <laughs> just like <laughs> you judge them. Oh, I like Gary Vee. Um, you know what? Let's do let's do one last question. Now that we know that Dustin's a terrible Dustin was almost a terrible person. You know, I just want to say it's it's not the thought that counts when it comes to whether or not you do good or bad things. Uh-huh. Um it's actually whether or not you act on your terrible thoughts so because I'm we all have terrible a thoughts person. and we I'm choose person not then. to act on them. No, because you've acted on a lot of other terrible things like the metadata example I gave earlier. I'm actually – There's no proof of that. We have no proof that that I'm ever actually happened. like – there's 
multiple episodes of the podcast where you've told that story. I'm actually like 75% certain that this whole website story you just told was something you improvised on the spot because I actually shared the real story you were going to tell. And you're like, oh, shit, I have to think of something else real quick. No, I forgot um, about that actually until you just said that. No, the uh, the website story was 100% true. Uh, Boris Verks from past guests on the podcast, uh, just asked, got a question. How do you estimate the losses for the wedding part of your business due to everything that's happening out there right now? I told you I'm losing $1 billion. Um, SBA, if you're listening, um, that's why I applied for a $1 billion small business loan, um, as relief for the economic times. <laughs> Yeah, great, great thinking. Um, I think you have to look at – it's kind of difficult to figure out because right now people are postponing their weddings and they still want to use you. So a lot of them, when they postpone, some of them have already paid in full. Some of them have paid half or, or whatever, and they're postponing for a date down the line, and that date down the line – is a date where you could have booked somebody else. So if they pick a busy day, uh, you know, if they pick like a, like a, you know, one of those special days, like a two one twenty one next year or whatever, you know, one of those like, ooh, that's a cool number sort of days. Maybe one two twenty one. That'd be twelve twenty one. That'd be pretty cool, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not good at picking out the cool numbers, guys. I'm sorry. But yeah, so like if they, if they pick one of those dates that's going to be a popular date, then yeah, it's cool that you got to keep that client and you're still shooting their wedding. But now you're missing out on other weddings you could have been shooting on that day as a result. Um, unless you're the kind of company that has like a large associate program and can book a bunch of different weddings on the same day, like this is going to have an effect on the line. And that's why it's so hard to estimate just how much this is going to hurt your business. Uh, aside from that, like during this time period where you're not shooting weddings, you're also not create, you're, you're not generating more marketing material because we all use our weddings as marketing material. So you're also missing out on this, uh, generation of marketing material for your company that you use then to, you know, uh, sell yourself to your clients and stuff. So you're going to have to get a little bit more creative, um, cause you can't just always go back to old photos, uh, which we all do. I mean, why not? You could, but I mean, if you, if you wanted to do something current, if you want to do something trendy, if you want to cash in on the idea that everybody's home right now, everybody like you, you have to think about that. So you're going to have to generate like new marketing material. You can stay with the tried and true, the classics, but then again, it's, it's really tough right now and you have to find ways to stand out. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into like estimating how much this is going to cost you. And like more than that, like you also have to take into account the fact that bookings are slowing down right now. I'm seeing from a lot of different people and inquiries are slowing down. Um, because when times are turbulent, when things are tumultuous, like they are right now, it makes people less likely to book, uh, back. What was it? Almost four years ago now when the last presidential election was going on, we saw a decrease in inquiries and I was like, doing searches online trying to figure out like if other people were experiencing it and a lot of people were and one of the things they said was that during tumultuous times like when there's going to be a change in who's president of your country or something like that um a lot of people become uncertain about the future and it makes them not want to plan for the future and so it's really hard to estimate the impact this is going to have on your business but i mean just like a base thing is you can look at the weddings that get canceled on you the weddings that get postponed and then like the weddings you're missing out on, on those postponed dates. Like if they schedule on like a Thursday in the middle of February, yeah, you probably weren't going to book a wedding for that date, you know? So it's probably not that big of a deal. Um, it gets a little bit easier if you do like conferences and stuff like that. Like one of the things that got canceled for Jen and I was a conference that Jen was going to shoot. Um, and that gets a little bit easier to say because it's like, that's not getting postponed. So that's like, maybe they'll hire me again next year. Maybe they won't, we don't really know. Um, But that's just revenue that was lost. But like with weddings, because things can be postponed because people still want to get married, there's different stuff going in. And, you know, some people are trying to do like this thing where they're like, let's uh, when when all this first hit, like a lot of people were like, can we do like an elopement now? So it's like just us and like maybe our moms and dads 
at the ceremony like that our elopement ceremony or whatever and then like we do like a big party later which seemed like such a great idea at the time and like now it's looking like in my opinion you should not be doing any sort of thing with people like outside of your house right. who like you, you don't have like daily contact with like like that you don't have to have contact with um which really really makes things difficult but like yeah i loved the idea of like yeah let's just elope with our friends and then push back the wedding so uh but what i was going to say is if you are in that situation now you're doing an elopement for your client like the photography because that's what a lot of people were talking about i'll shoot an elopement for you now and then we'll do like a reception later uh did you most people who are pitching that were not pitching and I will charge you more because I'm doing an elopement and a reception. They're like, I'll just do it free of cost because I don't want to lose the business or whatever. But now, like, you're shooting twice. And then, you know, that's another day that you don't have. Plus, you're generating more images, which means it's taking up more space right. in your hard drives. Which, you know, Boris could actually probably help some people out with uh, dot photon there and compressing the raw so it takes up less space. But that's kind of – I'm getting way off into the weeds here, but it's, it's really, really hard to estimate this kind of stuff. Uh, yep. That's why Donnie Trump's going to send us $3,000, right, Steve? I wouldn't count on it, but it would be very nice, and I would love to see both sides of our government, uh, both political arms, come together for this. Um, let's do one more. Kenzie Ray McMullen, because you skipped her question earlier to get to Roger Roger. Um, Roger, Roger. She asked in our very own Facebook group a while back, I need to speed up my editing process. Currently, I do everything in camera raw, and then we'll pull into Photoshop mm -hmm. if I need to do any additional editing. Any other tips or tricks or even programs that have helped you speed up the process? I'm drowning in editing and want to speed myself up and see if I can manage it before I start to outsource it. Outsource Tips it. Tips and tricks. Let's do it. Outsource it. That's my tip and my trick. And who, who would you say to you? I don't know. <laughs> Joking. Uh, Kenzie, this is what I would say. Um, Tips and tricks, I would stop using Camera Raw for all your editing. I would start using Lightroom, generate smart previews, and uh, then do batch editing where you basically you edit the first image in a series of images and then batch apply the edits across like everything that was shot in the same area. And you just kind of go through and you just make sure everything is still the same with regards to exposure because, you know, right. everything else is basically the same. Uh, and that'll really speed things up. And uh, I think one of the things that takes the most time is probably calling. And I was hearing somebody talk about calling recently and like their process for like how they get through it, like getting into a uh, workflow. I think it was, uh, it was uh, Andy Buscemi on Wedding Photographers Unite and Lindsay Daddario and Jimmy Farrar that we're talking about it and um they they were given a lot of great advice about like uh lindsay said you could like work backwards when you were calling so you start at the end of the wedding day and then work to the beginning going backwards through the whole thing because then it's like you're seeing it with fresh eyes and a lot of times when you shoot something you shoot until you get it right and then you stop so like your last image or so will be the best image um i highly that works for some people if that's the way you shoot i highly personally disagree with that my way of calling is you go through first image that looks good is the keeper and then you just keep going you just keep going you don't ever look back you don't ever go back mm -hmm. you know in, in in times of war in the military we leave no man behind here in the u.s in times of editing with lightroom we leave lots of men behind all of them and by men i mean photos of men so and how, women. how i operate kenzie's i i go through similar to steve if i still called my own weddings that is and uh, oh, you got that studio manager now. Nice. Really is amazing. Saves me so much time. Um, and I just pick the best photos as I go through. I'm hard. I'm fast. I don't, you know, there's no going back and second guessing. It's either good or it's not good. And that's it. That's the photos my couples get. I don't ever go back again and be like, oh, I want to narrow it down further. Um, that's, yeah, simple, easy. And then similar to what Steve said about batch editing, I apply one preset to all of my photos and I export them and I'm done. You know what could really speed up your process though, Kenzie? Shoot less. And you know what could super speed up your process, Kenzie? Stop shooting entirely. <laughs> think about that. You've got eight weeks to think about that mm. when you're not shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have eight weeks to be like, wow, my process has gotten so fast. Jen and I have been doing a lot of talking and it's like during this next eight weeks, 
You might switch Maybe careers. we just realize we hate photography. <laughs> You might just really get into Uber Eats, Steve, and you just might do be a full time thing. <clears throat> yeah. Or or CEO and president of the wedding trader dot com. Ooh, Rachel Blinkenship just tuned in and she says, I wanna watch this, but she's also in the middle of Jojo Rabbit. Can we do this again? Nope. Sorry, Rachel. This was a one time only uh thing. Um I'm so sorry. Rachel, if you're still there, I just want to say Jojo Rabbit is a very, very good movie. You should definitely watch that instead of listening to me and Dustin right now because this will be a podcast that comes out later. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we are wrapping it up right now. So, we'll yeah, probably not really worth it. Over so that it not, doesn't nope, take nope, away this, none of this is happening. Audio version. Not worth it to listen to this right now. I would tune out because thanks for listening to another episode of the Wedding Photo Hangover Podcast. If you love the show, please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. If you want to connect, we're at Wedding Photo Hangover on Instagram. Dustin, my man, is at Dustin underscore McKibben. And I'm at Stephen Van Elk. We have an awesome Facebook group. You should join. Just search for Probably Wedding Hangover. If you group. want more content, though, head over to the Patreon by going to patreon.com slash WPH or go to Steve and Dustin Save the World dot com. Thanks for listening. That that redirects to the Patreon, Steve and Dustin Save the World dot com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Your head is pounding, your limbs feel like dead weight, and your entire being aches for the sweet embrace of death. That's right. Next week after you shoot An another wedding. wedding. Eight weeks from now. <laughs> Man, I just realized like how much of like me reading the thing at the end is like performative and I'm like moving my hands and doing like little facial things and stuff. And it's like now that we have a live audience, like they can see that. Yeah, they can see that they before see it's just you seeing pants. that. And I was, well, do they? <laughs> they see it all, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that, that was like a weird experience. Did you have any like weird moments to Dustin? Because that, that was a little weird for me. Well, at the beginning, it got weird because I would read what people were saying, all 392 listeners or watchers or viewers, and um, see their comments come in. And I tried to not watch them since you told me at the beginning we were not going to watch them. And then I would see your eyes drift throughout the episode and you would pause because you were watching them. Um, yeah, my eyes were drifting and I was pausing. That's normal when we record, but no, it's not. I'm usually distracted. <laughs> You're right. I always give you my full attention. I'm always staring straight into your big, beautiful eyes, Don't and you. you're over there like calling a wedding right now while we record. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So oh, there's knocking out a few real estate edits. To, uh, try to Don't get worry. This house done. <laughs> Which respect, man. Getting houses done is hard. Yeah. Um, Hey guys, thank you all so much. Um, during this time, Dustin, do you have any cool stuff you want to recommend? Hey, anybody in still in the comments, if you got some cool stuff to recommend, uh, when Dustin and I finish talking about this for like two seconds or however long we're going to do it, we'll, we'll read off whatever you guys say too. Dustin, go. Uh, so I was traveling this week, so I actually have been binge watching um, an old show, an old classic, an American favorite. That was a burp. Um, Five Goes West? Nope. Friday Night Lights. Um, Steven can't relate to this show, so he's never watched it. Uh, somebody comes from a small town uh, like myself uh, where it was a big fit football town, and I played football, and that was sort of you either played football or you didn't exist kind of school. And uh, so that's always been one of my favorite shows because I can relate to a lot of it. So that's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's pretty boring. Pretty, uh, I've been watching American Idol. Yeah. But they just sent home the trash collector guy. So now it's uh, <laughs> not as exciting. I'm sorry, bud. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, Jen and I have been doing this thing with the kids where, so we wrote a bunch of ideas down uh, for things we could do to like hang out with them and spend time with them. And then we wrote, wrote them down on like pieces of paper, put them into our cookie jar, 
and then we pulled out of the cookie jar like these different activities and we pulled one out every single day that then we do with the kids Mm -hmm. and um that has been super fun tonight we did a pillow fort pillow slash blanket fort and a laser tag fight with the kids and that was was gen one twice wow (laughs) she beat me she's just better than you steven at everything for certain uh i won one time and then um ian won once nora did not ever win i actually re- reset nora's thing because it's like three shots and you're out so i reset nora's gun a whole bunch because you know she's four and she's getting torn up but she's having a lot of fun out there she took me out one time because i, I didn't realize she had snuck up and was standing next to me and was just like sitting there like clicking. Cause I was so worried about Jan and Ian. So, so as parents, uh, Steven, humiliating pro gun with your children, laser tag gun. Yeah. Laser, laser tag gun. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, no love laser tag gun. Okay. Just making sure, you know, politics aside, Steven is pro weapon in the hands of a child. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that not true? No. I'm just just wanted to make sure we're all on the same page here. Oh gosh, thanks, Dustin. Yeah, no, no, that's that's what I wanted to put out into the world. That's thank you so much for that. Um, listener Kenzie Ray McMullen says, "Watch all the trash TV, especially Love Is Blind." Is that and she good? said she knows Jen loves it. Uh, I I watched bits and pieces of it like over Jen's shoulder and um, it was interesting. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing. Jen actually skipped like the last three or four episodes just to get to the end to see how it ended because she wasn't huge into it. Um, Hmm. Wait, maybe I'm thinking of a maybe that was that Australian show she was watching where it's like people had to like get back together with their exes or whatever. Oh, Jen was watching this Australian show where like people had to get back together with their exes and Jen and I were both like yelling, like, do not get with him. He's garbage. He's trash. Like we, we got like super like yelly about it. And then we just like turned it off. We're like, we can't do that anymore. Like this, this is not a, a show that it's making us feel great about our lives. I don't remember what it was called though. Kenzie, uh, Kenzie also says love called. Island, love Island question mark. Nah, it's like, it's like hook up with your ex island or something. <laughs> hook up with your uh, ex island. Very catchy name. <laughs> and so Garing Bat says uh, <laughs> X on the beach. That's, That's a great beach. name. I, I'd watch the shit out of that. Uh, Garing Bat says to watch Legion on FX. That's one I'm not picked up. Uh, mm-hmm. Hulu just bought or somehow Hulu just acquired all of the FX library. So I have a feeling I'm going to be watching a lot more FX. Yeah. And uh, Kenzie says, uh, Love is Blind is the one with Jessica. And Mark, who's 24, I believe, if that means anything. Not yeah. to me, it doesn't. Dude, I've been watching The Good Place. I'm in season two. I've watched all of The Good Place. I Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to catch up, bud. Yeah, it's very, I'm very so good. hard to not talk about that show because you're not caught up. I know. I know. There's this great episode where they were talking to uh, Janet, and somebody was like, Janet's a girl and she's like not a girl <laughs> and a robot and she's like not a robot and like and smoking hot and she goes yes I am very attractive <laughs> and it made me laugh so hard dude it's like the best moment of that Whoever show wrote her scenes or her lines is I think she makes that show mm-hmm. like her yeah her identity is the best part of that show it's a good part um Dude, it's super late. It's uh, whew, one in the morning. We we gotta call this. So are, you, are we staying on real? here for Stephen Dustin Save the World, or are we we going all? Uh, that's Patreon. So Patreon. that'll be off air. I'll be in the yeah. secret Facebook group. Got it. Yep. Um. So yeah. Uh. Good night, Dustin. Good night, everybody who tuned in for the live show. And uh, thank you guys so much for being here. This is awesome. All right. Good night, Steve. Good night. And thanks you for everyone who had comments. Made it fun. Really fun. I wasn't allowed to watch him because dad said no. I'm dad. <laughs> Did you say dark booty is what you're after? 
Wedding Photo Hangover was edited this week by Steve Van Elk of Bespoke Tone. Go to Bespoke Tone for all of your photo, video, and audio editing needs. Woo-wee!